Every year in America, there are over 1 million deaths because of type 2 diabetes and chronic obesity. This includes heart attacks and strokes. That's six and a half 747s crashing every day. What's even more surprising is that the fix is easy. It's your lifestyle. Wouldn't it be nice if you could actually add quality years to your life rather than dying one organ at a time? Obesity and diabetes are the cause of over a million deaths per year. Most diseases are reversible because most diseases are lifestyle diseases, especially type 2 diabetes and chronic obesity. Seriously now, they can be reversed and the quality of your life can be renewed. Call New Star today at 1-800-525-9192. You will see dramatic changes in the first few days at our program and you will be on the road to a better, more robust quality of life. The New Start programs are simple and effective. Hi friends and welcome to another edition of New Start Now. I'm your host, Ron Giannone. In our studio today, we have Newell Thomas McKee and we're gonna be calling him Skip. But stay tuned because at the end of our program, we're gonna have a short dissertation by Dr. Randy Bivens on air. So let's break away, take a look at when Skip first arrived. I've always been a sugar addict and I've gained quite a bit of weight. And I was recently diagnosed with osteoarthritis and I was told the only cure is surgery or uh, medicines. And uh, I have a friend who came to this institution and got wonderful results. And that's why I'm here, to get the results. I've been on a yo-yo diet and I perform much better at a lower weight, I know. And with the joint problems from osteoarthritis, uh, a weight reduction would be tremendous. I watched my dad go through uh, illnesses from uh, the corporate lifestyle. He gained tremendous amount of weight and destroyed his body. He went through numerous surgeries, and uh, I don't want to go that, that way. Health, to me, is, is magic. You can't enjoy life without good health. Hi, friends, and welcome back. As I promised, Skip Noel <laughs> Thomas McKee. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I want to get right into the interview because we don't have a lot of time, but share with me, if you would, what has happened? Well, I've had fairly good success. I've uh, gotten off all my medications. Well, wait a minute. Let me stop you. Okay. You, you said fairly good success? Well, I'd say an excellent success. <laughs> okay. I just want to, I want to hear you say that because what I just heard from the difference between when you got here and now, yeah. you're a changed man. Pretty much, uh, all, all my medications are gone. My blood pressure's uh, equal to or better than when I was on the medication. Oh, you're off the medication? Uh, totally off the medication. And, and what's your blood pressure? Uh, 128 uh, over 85 this morning. Without so, medication? Without medication. Amen. Yeah. Tell me more, I'm excited about this. Well, I've... Uh, uh, one goal was uh, I have osteoarthritis, yeah, and uh, my joints were beginning to hurt, and that was the only solution is operations or uh, drugs to kill the pain. And uh, with the diet I'm on right now, I'm pretty much p pain pain free and in enjoying it, and walking five to seven miles a day with no uh, adverse effects. Wow, five to seven miles. Yeah. I used to do that when I had a coach that was living with me for a short time. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's right behind this camera, mm -hmm. Rich Smith. Uh, We've been friends together for quite a while. Mm -hmm. He used to work here. Nonetheless, uh, I'm really proud of you. I'm so mm -hmm. proud because when you first arrived, I wasn't sure that you would actually do real well. I mean, maybe you weren't either. Maybe yeah. that was being conveyed to me. But you've done tremendously well. Well, I'm very happy with the, the results. And I must admit I was a little skeptical going in, but uh, I'm a believer <laughs> as we speak. How much weight have you lost? Uh, I've only lost about seven pounds, but uh, I've, I've gained a little muscle that I didn't have when I first got here. That's right. And I anticipate to lose about 25 more pounds. 
Okay, what mm. other conditions were you dealing with that we haven't talked about it? Well, those were the two major conditions. Two major, uh, okay. But I've uh, actually noticed, noticed an improvement in my skin. Uh, I don't have the uh, sugar, des desire for sugar anymore. Uh, I would ca have called myself a sugar holic. Really? And uh, th that desire is no longer. What does a sugar holic do? Tell me what you used to do. I would go a mile out of my way for a donut. For a donut? <laughs> and at the strangest times of day, uh, it just, uh, no particular time, just when the mood would strike. Whenever that little guy uh, inside says, yeah. I need a donut. And I need I'm it asking now. you this question for a reason. Yeah. You know how many viewers are watching you right now saying, oh, he's just like me. <laughs> I got to have a donut. I got to yeah. have a piece of pie. Yeah. I got to have sugar. I got to have this, that, and the other thing. And you've just confessed yeah. that you don't need to do that. No, I don't. I don't well, how it. do you change? Uh, just the wonderful diet I'm on. You're on a diet? I definitely am on a diet. You mean a lifestyle? A lifestyle, yeah. I like to call it that yeah. because diet sounds like something I'm going to do for a while. Yeah. Lifestyle is something I've chosen to live by permanently. And obviously you've mm -hmm. made that choice and yeah. your body is balancing. Uh, to be off of medi medicine and to have, uh, be free of joint pain at the time, I think I can live with this diet. <laughs> <laughs> Lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Lifestyle. Okay. Now you call it whatever you like. Yeah. Yeah. I like to uh, interchange those two words because they do, again, convey a certain thing, you know, eating mm -hmm. habit. And mm -hmm. This is more than about food, wouldn't you say? Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. like walking five, <laughs> six miles. Yeah, now, if anybody told me I'd be walking seven I, miles a day, I'd have called them. Yeah. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> Insane, at least. Yeah, yeah. What else has happened that has changed? Your, your, your sleep hap uh, habits, have they changed at all? Uh, sleeping very soundly mm -hmm. uh, and, and enjoying it. So, And no TV at night, uh, <laughs> just quiet, restful sleep. Yeah, it's, it's been great. How has the staff treated you? Oh, everybody's been superb. Uh, good student relationship. I've met a lot of really nice people. Everybody on staff has been terrific and the doctors have uh, been out of sight. They've uh, really go out, go out of their way to make you feel comfortable. Now you say mm -hmm. student relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like everyone to know that we have a college here mm -hmm. and a high school and I think once in a while we have a little uh, junior uh, kind mm -hmm. of school. Uh, but you get to mix in with all these young folks and they kind of help out in the program here and there. Well, uh, a lot of them were, the instructors were much younger than I. Yes. Uh, and, and they were all very professional and very helpful, very kind. Now, what about food? How 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 did you like the food? Uh, there were some foods that uh, I could leave, but 98% uh, of the foods were, were wonderful. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> will be learning how to prepare those foods myself. Uh, yes. I've learned up to a certain degree, but I have a lot of practice ahead. We um, mm -hmm. broke away for lunch during our interviews today, and Rich, myself, my wife, and another friend had delicious vegan soups. We had a salad and bread, and she made a salmon, uh, it isn't really salmon, but it mm -hmm. tastes like salmon. Yeah. And, uh, it was absolutely delightful, and I, I can't imagine eating any other way. Well, it, it's a big change in my life. My wife's Sicilian, uh, and uh, she cooks of the Mediterranean style, so I think we're going to be able to adapt. Well, to, I'm uh, half Sicilian, so yeah. I understand. Yeah. They use a lot of oil, a lot of fat, yeah. Yeah. so she's going to have to scale back on that. <laughs> yeah. What about anything else that... Uh, you experienced while you were here that you want to share? Well, I think uh, just meeting the people from all over the country and, and parts of South America, uh, just listening to their problems and how they're progressing and uh, just the camaraderie that uh, we've managed to enjoy. Helping it, one another. It, yeah, we're, 
we do help each other quite a bit, I think, especially during the walking phases. It's nice to have a friend along. So. Yeah. Your doctor now is Dr. Uh, Lukens. Lukens. Mm -hmm. And we'll be interviewing him right after you. Um, how does he say you're faring? I think he's happy with my progress. Uh, he's uh, been very, very encouraging and uh, helped me with a couple of my personal issues. Uh, he's just been very understanding and uh, top notch. And last but not least, I want you to think about this, what you're going to do when you get home, how you're going to implement this lifestyle, how will it infringe on your old lifestyle? Is it going to be a, an easy change when you get back home? Here it seems fairly easy because it's all set up. What about when you get home? Well, I'm sure I'll make some mistakes along the way, but... Uh... I've been assured that I can call and ask questions and get advice from the instructors. I uh, don't anticipate a, a major problem. Good. Mm -hmm. And do you have any plans on teaching the family or anyone else this new lifestyle? As, as I progress through the lifestyle, I think I can, can probably teach by example. Yeah. Uh, I, hope that'll, I hope that'll work. Yeah. Well, I think you're an amazing guy. I mm -hmm. think it took a lot of gumption to come on the set here mm -hmm. and share your testimony, mm -hmm. but even to come here, because I remember, although I wanted to come, I was a little apprehensive because I was afraid. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what would happen. But here you are, you've experienced, I notice you're wearing your, your belt and your trousers <laughs> a little bit differently, and you're starting to see that old skip come out. <laughs> I'd have to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, remember now, I'm going to be doing some follow-up. I'll be calling you from time to time and seeing if you have any mm -hmm. questions. I want to thank you again, Skip, for coming on the program. God bless you and well, your new you, lifestyle. Ron. And friends, don't go away because we have a message and an interview with Dr. Lukens. Hi, friends, and welcome back in our studio, Dr. Rick Lukens. Yeah, it's always good. It's good that you can be here. And uh, just for the viewer's sake, you've been here 25 years on staff. And what did you do before you got here? I never asked you that. Well, I was in Africa for 15 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and lifestyle diseases <laughs> are not existent over there. Is that a fact? Yeah, and in 15 years, I only saw two people with a heart attack. Wow. I was working amongst the uh, the African nationals in the in the countries, and their diet is so different, and their exercise is beyond belief. So, so that is a good segue into <laughs> what we're going to be talking about here. Yeah, it is diet and exercise, which I like to refer to as lifestyle, because in my new lifestyle, in Skip's new lifestyle, it, it's about diet and exercise, which we call a certain. Tell us about this. Well, you know, for him, he uh, he didn't mention that he's an airline pilot. Yeah. And at, at uh, you know when you one day you're you're physically fit, you're ready to go, you can do all this kind of stuff, and then 24 hours later you're not physically fit, you're not, you know, they've changed that now. I think they've given him an extra maybe five years and so forth. But you know. That kind of a schedule and, you know, <laughs> airport food. <laughs> oh, boy. So, I, there, I don't think there is a fast food company that doesn't like the airports. <laughs> and so, you know, eating that kind of stuff. And he didn't know, he didn't know about diet and, and that kind of stuff and, and the stress and so forth. He's such a, you can tell, he's such a very nice, gentle man. If I, if I was, uh, you know, seeing him 
come down the corridor and he's got the four stripes. That's the skipper, I'd say. I, yeah. You know, this is going to... This would be a nice the, flight. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy looks like he really knows what he's doing. And he, he yeah. is such a nice guy. And it was hard to see him, you know, because you saw him when he came in. He was quite tenuous, you know, about... Yeah. Well, yeah, can this really... Uh, uh, you know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, he told me all that. <laughs> but, you know, when I met him, I said, there's something different about this guy. I felt comfortable around him. Yeah, that, you, you do, yeah. Yeah, and that's that pilot. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah, I'd yeah. like to fly with him. Yeah. And I don't like to fly. Yeah, no, that's right. So, but anyway, yeah, and a couple of things with him. His cholesterol was just unbelievable. They had him on three different cholesterol medications. For what? Why would they uh, do that? Well, because, well, like his mother... Her cholesterol was between 350 and 400. Would you be okay with that? Wow. <laughs> Mine's never been like that. No. And uh, so anyway, he, you know, he had that as part of his genetics. And what you do is, is when there's a problem, you put another medicine in on. And then when it isn't doing what you want it to do, you add another, another one, one and so forth. Mm -hmm. And eventually... You're, you're, you can, you're not talking about us here. You don't do that. No, but that's what the doctor would have to do. In, in the outside yeah. world, yeah. Yeah, to get, right. his, to get his cholesterol numbers down to where they're supposed to be. And but they weren't, not, they weren't where they're supposed to be. No. Uh, well, his was approaching that with, with all the medicines that he was on. <laughs> but my family practice journals 10 years ago, and family practice news is, they say, look, you give this medication, it comes down a little bit, and the doctor says, all right, but... You know, it's better if it's, you know, and then the next one. And so uh, when you get the numbers down, that's what my family practice journal was saying. So you get the numbers to where you want them to do. And you say, and, and all of these medications, they always advertise, along with lifestyle and exercise and diet change, this is a little bit of an adjunct for you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Americans are all doing the lifestyle, right? Right. Since 1970, the average American is 25 pounds heavier. So it isn't working that well. No. <laughs> so anyway, so they do that. But then now if you say, hey, uh, we want your cholesterol to be below 200. And I think that by that time, his, his was like, 150 some you see now he came here primarily and he told me this is because of his arthritis he'd already had surgery on his one hand mm. he's going to have to have it on the others and then you know he, he he said he told you that his dad just had some you know towards the end of the life more and more surgeries more and more procedures more and more and and from the time he was he was skip's age until he was in his 80s when, when he, uh, he died. I mean, it was just, it, it wasn't a happy life. It wasn't a good life. It was just go after the next pain and after the next pain. So say you've got that, uh, that uh, cholesterol down now to the 150 range. Then now I'm going to talk to him about lifestyle. Okay, now Skip, you've got to get your three to five miles in because we want to get your cholesterol down to 150. You've got to stop eating all the meats, the flesh foods. In fact, you'll do best if you go on totally whole plant foods, you see. And sometimes they have to go on no oil whatsoever, whether it's, whether it's the vegetable oils, even the beautiful olive oils that they advertise and stuff like that, to get it down. But we know that it'll work. Mm -hmm. So he came here primarily for these joints. And we've seen that because... The, the, I, I, here we go on the prostaglandins again. They dilate the tiny little blood vessels so you get 75% more flow to the heart, the brain, the kidneys. And he wasn't particularly worried about that, but he was worried about the joints. And that has gotten and, better. And the other thing the prostaglandins do is that they decrease the inflammation. And so he was really surprised that I think the at the end of the first week when I saw him there, he said, you know, I had to have surgery on this hand. But he said, this one doesn't hurt anymore. I, I may not have to have surgery on it. I said, you're exactly right. Stay on your lifestyle and you won't. 
And so that's the reason why we take the leave and the Advil and the aspirin and all these kind of things, because they're they work against the inflammatory prostaglandins. No, and, but and what he, about his was done that with having a new set of prostaglandins because he's only been on a plant-based diet. And I think people just, nobody knows that hardly. Well, what, how does that uh, correlate or does it have any, anything to do with uh, high cholesterol? I uh, know the, the cholesterol is, is uh, well, the fats, it has to do with the fats, so it's only peripherally related. But the high cholesterol is... Uh, is something that keeps stimulating the liver to make more cholesterol because mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite subjects. I can't get on it, but free oil in the, in the stomach turns the cholesterol mechanism on and it takes about five weeks to turn it off. Even with, with a, a vegan, vegetarian, you have to go low fat. And that's what plugs up the blood vessels. But the idea is that the, the Big blood vessels are plugged up all the way, but if you open up the, the end, it's just like taking out a plugged up filter. And, and the physicists, when they come through, I say, well, tell me about this. And they say, yeah, people are getting 75% more oxygenated blood. That's why their hearts get so strong and it pumps the water out of their legs. Mm. Tell us, uh, we have about a minute left, doctor. What can the viewers do at home? Well, see, for, for him, he, he said, he, he explained it this way. If somebody had told me I was going to be walking five to seven miles, I'd have told him they were crazy. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that you have to build up on it. So don't just say, well, I saw this guy on television and, and uh, he just went from nothing up to five to seven miles. And now oh, you can tear things up, but just do something. And then as your body gets more physically fit, more and more and more until finally you get to the place where you're just you're energized and you can go out and do it. You know that. I know that, but I wanted to hear it from you because yeah. that's what happens with me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, uh, as you mentioned in a previous program, I'll do some follow-up, and that's one of my jobs here, yeah. working and following up on our guests, and it'll be delightful to be chatting with him. Yeah, I really will. He's such a nice guy. Well, I want to thank you for coming yeah. on the program. It's always and good it's, to see it's you. It's good to see a success person interviewing us because you, you can give your own testimony. And friends, don't go away because Dr. Randy Bivens will be right with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Randy Bivens. Although we can survive for weeks without food and multiple days without water, we would die after just a few minutes without a breath of air. Audrey Mestre came from a family of scuba divers and snorkelers and spent a large portion of her life underwater. She was so confident in her abilities that in 2002, she attempted a world record dive of 561 feet. The day of the dive came and at 300 feet, tragedy struck. Audrey blacked out and was rushed back up to the surface, but after spending nine long minutes without oxygen, she could not be revived and she passed away. Audrey's death brings to light just how crucial air is to our lives, but how much do we really know about it? Air is roughly 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. In addition to the oxygen that your cells need to survive, there are small amounts of other elements as well as particulate material such as pollens, dust, mold, and other pollutants. The best air to breathe for optimum health is oxygen-rich, negatively charged air. A charged atom is called an ion. Ions can be either negatively or positively charged, negatively charged ions having more electrons than protons. The negative charge in air is usually attached to oxygen. Negative ions tend to concentrate near rivers and waterfalls due to their movement. They also exist in places like beaches, forests, mountains, and interestingly enough, areas that have just been struck by lightning. All of these places have something in common other than the profusion of healthy negative ions. They all seem to congregate in the outdoors, specifically the wild and natural outdoors. In fact, it's often been discovered that the number of negative ions in any of the places I just mentioned is up to 10 times more 
than the office or bedroom you're sitting in right now. Negative ions are also referred to as happy ions because they contribute to better moods, more energy, and an overall sense of well-being. Have you ever noticed your mood after leaving a sunny day at the beach or after hiking to a grand rushing waterfall? Maybe you notice that you feel refreshed, you feel calm and, and happy. There's a reason for that happiness. Studies show that people who spend time in environments with a high negative ion concentration are less likely to be depressed. They sleep better and have more energy too. On the flip side, positive ions have been associated with higher levels of anxiety and depression. So how do we get more negative ions? Go to a place where there are higher concentrations of negative ions, like a forest or the beach. Intentionally take three to five very deep breaths of clean air. Doesn't that already sound refreshing? The result of rising oxygen levels is a clearer mind. But what if you don't live near a forest or an ocean? Well, before you go to sleep tonight, try leaving a window or two open. This increases the concentration of negative, happy ions in your home. Step outside for a minute every hour at work for a literal breather. On the weekend, if you're faced with a choice between taking a hike in the mountains or going to a congested amusement park, you now know why you'll feel much better if you choose the mountains. Take it a step further and grow a few plants indoors. They can be used to grow your own fresh air. Some of the best plants for this are plants with a large surface area, such as ferns, palms, and lilies. These have been shown to reduce contaminants, such as formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, xylene, and benzene. It almost seems too simple, but air's effect is proven. A breath of fresh air will make you feel better right now and is an important part of living a longer, healthier life. You're killing me! <laughs> you're killing me! Actually, Dad, you're killing yourself. With the only program scientifically proven to prolong life by 10 years, the New Start Lifestyle Program can significantly decrease the risk of disease, including diabetes. Done with that? Think I am. Go to NewStart.com now to learn more. The New Start Lifestyle Program, we bring you back to life. Well, friends, that's it for today, but join us next week for another episode. In the meantime, pick up the phone and give us a call at 800-525-9192. Mention the New Start Now program and receive the New Start Special.